What's going on everybody? Welcome back to Tony Hawk's Project 8. Today we're tackling Tony Hawk's AM challenge, which means we're going to crack the Project 8 and we're going to be a, a Project 8-er, a Project 8 skater, and we're going to have some fun doing it, tell you what. And it is still Christmas Eve here and I'm still having some fun. I just finished editing this video, so now I'm commentating it. That's how it's done, my friend. So, yeah, not much to really report on that this time, but I haven't played Project 8, like, probably for like a good month and a half, if not two months, um, since all this garbage has been going on. So it's going to suck when I go back to it because, you know, I was already all, you know, situated with the game, getting all the controls and stuff like that and I, I didn't actually you know get number one yet so I'm gonna have to go back to the game eventually to finish it so I'm kind of dreading that day because I'm gonna have a lot of trouble doing it but I think I think I can do it and if I can't do it then I'll cry and probably you know throw a fit something like that give it an angry angry review because my um my my skill level is so garbage that I blame the game at that point. So there's that. So since I've been gone, um, Tony Hawk Skate Jam has released on iOS. It is not out for mobile yet. I hear that some people are pretty angry about that. Just kidding. Literally everybody's angry about that. And anytime I mention the damn game, it seems to be... This game's a hot pile of garbage, or this game is not out on Android yet. So, good good commentary on that one. I'm really happy that we're sticking so consistently to the same comments about the game. And as I did with Pro Skater 5, when I first bought it, I kind of enjoyed it. Um, with Skate Jam, I'm, I'm thoroughly enjoying it. I'm not. It's a fun mobile game. I don't really do much on mobile gaming. I try to stray away from that because if I have a bunch of games on my phone then I might not get any work done. Um, I do have like the occasional you know, solitaire, uh, word searches, stuff like that. I like that kind of stuff. Stuff that will keep me busy in like a waiting room, you know, waiting room games. Spider Solitaire, something like that. But Skate Jam is a pretty fun game and I'm, I'm really enjoying it. Um, it's not Tony Hawk Pro Skater. I think that needs to be drilled through everybody's heads that are that's downloading it because it's not. It is not Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. It's a mobile game that is not Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. It may to some blind people look like a Tony Hawk's Pro Skater game or it may be the idea of Tony Hawk having any kind of game being a Tony Hawk Pro Skater game, but it's not. It's its own thing. It's its own entity and it is Definitely its own issue in itself. Um, I like the game. I think it's pretty cool. I think a lot of things should be fixed with it. But as for a, a mobile game that Tony Hawk is tied to, it's not that bad. You know? Of course, everybody is like, I wish Tony Hawk's Pro Skater was released for the iOS and mobiles and stuff like that. But that's, that's an issue in itself. It's not that he probably doesn't want to do it. It's that there's a lot of probably legal issues that go with that. Um, hence why Prosecutor 2 is ripped from the iOS store. I imagine that licensing expired and stuff like that. So, there's that. So, if you're going to download Skate Jam, don't, don't exec expect Pro Skater. I, don't, I said that before the damn game launched. And it's still happening. You know, I'm seeing all these reviews of these dipshits that are being like... He went from pro skater to selling pay to win mobile games when it's not even pay to win. Um, I think everyone is just focusing too much on it's not pro skater, it sucks. You know, if you just said it sucks and then backed it up with some reasons that are logical, which is very hard to come by apparently, um, then that's fine. That's fine. Back up your, your arguments. And, you know, show actual material in your arguments. Don't just compare it to something it's not trying to be. 
No, it has Tony Hawk's name on it. Great. It doesn't mean it's a Tony Hawk Pro Skater game, you know? And if they've mentioned that it's like Tony Hawk's Pro Skater or it's trying to be a successor, that's a whole another issue. I think, you know, if they stray away from that kind of line, you know, more people would be understood and more people would maybe have different expectations. But if you're comparing it to the game that is much better, then obviously there's going to be some issues because people love Pro Skater, but they don't like mobile games that aren't pro skater whatever there's a million fucking skateboarding games on the app store some are good some are bad you know you got skater which is really good and you got true skate which sucks i hate true skate no matter how many people actually like the game it does not feel as smooth as skater when you play the two games because they're both like kind of tech deck kind of games where you just play with your fingers and flip the board and stuff like that true skate does it in a really weird way it doesn't make it arcadey or realistic it, like it's in between with skater it's like you swipe left and you're doing a kickflip you swipe right doing a heel flip and you swipe up doing an impossible something like that a lot of foot catching stuff like that <clears throat> and it's fun it's a fun game um speaking of skater i'm going to stray away from skate jam because that's kind of triggering me a little bit i'll be doing videos on that soon i promise um Speaking of Skater, they released Skater XL, which is a early access Steam game um, that is a pretty much a simulator, it's skateboarding simulator, similar to Skate and Session, stuff like that, where it's, you know, more simulation than arcade, feeling like Tony Hawk. And the game feels pretty good. The game is actually very cool and very nice to play, but the problem is, is that it's $20 and that it's literally nothing with the game. You have one level, you have no customization options, you have a very lackluster tutorial, and you have literally no music. You have nothing to do in the game but skate this one spot, the Santa Monica court Courthouse, and that is it. That's it for $20, and I think that is absolutely ridiculous. I paid the $20 because I really wanted to play it, because it looks cool, and it plays great. It is like literally the smoothest skateboarding simulator game I've ever played. It is really cool. You got foot catches and you have flip tricks that are actually unique. It's a great game, but man, it should not have been $20 for the amount of content you're getting in it because it's just dumb. You know, I was going to stream the game, but when I actually booted up the game and saw what I got, yeah, I was a little bit annoyed and straight away from, yeah, I'm not going to stream this for fucking 20 minutes, man. That's that's all I can offer. So, sorry if that bothers anyone, but until the modding scene picks up, which it, it's picking up very quickly, thankfully, with um, graphic mods and stuff like that, and once parks are a thing, that'll be great. I'm working on a map right now that'll fit in it when, you know, the time comes. Um, but, for $20, not worth it. Don't waste your money. Unless you have a lot of money to just throw away 20 bucks for a one level, hopefully updated, eventually game. Who knows? I don't know what to tell you. So I don't know what to tell you. It's um not worth $20 at the moment, but I imagine the price is going to go up as more content is put into it, which is a really stupid practice. Early access games are always that kind of hit or miss kind of thing, so it's a great game. You know, if you want to get in, on, get in on it while it's early, you know, you do you, something like that. Um, but I think that, um, yeah, I think it'll eventually be a pretty good thing, but for the most part, right now, it is not very good. So. Anyway, a lot of cool skateboarding games coming out soon. Um, a lot of skateboarding games in development, whether they're going to be actually released or not. A lot of stuff in Unity. Um, Unity seems to be the the engine that everybody's going with. I'm not really sure what's going on with Unity. Everybody just loves it. Um, kind of, kind of feel like we finally got past that. Um, that unreal phase where everything was made in unreal and now we're going full unity 
Um, you want to hear a weird fact? I just found out this um, yesterday. Because I'm part of a um, an archiving group for um, 3D Groove, Shockwave, and Flash games. So I, I brought up um, the Family Guy MMO. Does anyone remember that game? I remember playing it for like three days and then giving up because it was really stupid. It was a Family Guy MMO web-based and apparently it was built on a Unity web player, which is really weird because it was so long ago and I don't even remember Unity ever being a thing back then. But it just shows that Unity's been around for way longer than maybe most of us know. And apparently it was used for an MMO, a web-based MMO for Family Guy. So how about that? How cool is that? There's your little bit of knowledge that I, I cared to share today because I found out about it and I was hoping to archive it, but there is no trace of it because it is an MMO and tracing and archiving those kinds of things seem to be impossible. So, especially if it's web-based, web-based stuff for MMOs. There's a lot of stuff I wish I could have archived, but I was too stupid back then when I actually enjoyed the games and I never thought they would shut down, but then they shut down and I couldn't archive everything. If you have games that you like, that are available now, consider archiving them. Consider saving them. Consider scraping them. Consider doing that so when they go away, you can be part of the solution with archiving because the web is a great thing and things on the web just disappear sometimes. And if you love that thing dearly and you have a lot of nostalgia for it, if you scrape it yourself, hey, you got all the files. You can rebuild that sucker from scratch. Similar to how they did it with Club Penguin, I don't really know if they used archiving for Club Penguin. I'm pretty sure that it was much easier for them because that stuff has been that stuff has been public for a while. Now I wish they did that with Millsbury. Millsbury was a web-based um, like a flash game for kids um, from General Mills that used like um, grocery shopping and simulation kind of tactics for kids and it was super fun it was a fun game um, for me as a kid I, I really liked that game and I scraped all that I could from archive.org but um, rebuilding that from scratch has been quite a task I, I've been picking at it I haven't really been trying too hard at it but it's it's one of those things that I, I'll probably eventually do when I have a long you know amount of time to myself um, and I have nothing else to do um, so yeah, archiving is cool. Look it up. Archiving um, flash games and stuff like that. There's tools out there. And your favorite flash games that you think are deleted probably still exist. Look up um, look up black, uh, Blue Maximus Flashpoint. If you have flash games that you enjoyed as a kid from Nick.com, Cartoon Network, stuff like that, it's probably archived. Um, so you have people to thank for that. Um, I didn't do any of it. I'm just... I'm on my own. I'm a lone wolf for that kind of stuff. So, have a great day, everybody. I hope to see you in the next episode. Peace the hell out.